Hi, I'm Sandy Sims with SDS Digital and the Accord CQRLL. This tutorial will cover using MIDI layers by function. The first thing I must mention is setting the module to your style of playing. I tend to have a lot of swing when I play, so I'll set the swing up some, so when it comes time to quantize the timing of the notes, it might be more accurate. With all these endless days of programming, unfortunately my piano playing skills have suffered greatly. I'll set the song effect swing, which affects all sequences, including layers, up to 21. As for keeping time, often I use a kick drum directly off the clock that is also patched to the sequirolel. But this time let's make a little percussion loop using two types of MIDI hi-hats. First click on the tracks add to make a tracks quick box, then select sequence A to enter the grid. This will offer a chance to show you how to do a tracks tracker sequence if you haven't seen that already in another video. First we must make changes to a couple of settings, so off to the setup menu in the pop-up window. First the clock should be set to times four, because we want four steps per clock pulse. Then, because this will be percussion, the MIDI channels must be changed to 10. Now back to the grid to put some notes on it. Double-clicking on the grid adds a note, and when not playing, the note plays in a, as an audition. With drums, the drum name is also shown briefly. I want an open hi-hat for the downbeat and then hi-hat ticks for the other beats. You may have noticed each one is played twice. This is because the first plays the whole row, which normally would be a chord, then the single note after. Let's have a listen. It's a bit more pleasant than that noisy kick, eh? Also, the start is um, noted by the longer hi-hat. As you can hear, it's perfectly in sync, though. Now to exit back to the main screen. The activity in the tracks tracker quick box is indicated by a little meter that corresponds to the velocities of notes, sort of like a VU meter. Now we can activate a layer quick box and set it to record a loop four bars long. I'll play in something simple for layer 1A. There, you can hear a bit of swing, even in this simple sequence I just did. The layer's timed quantization defaults to off, so the loop sounds exactly as I played it. Now on a different MIDI channel 5, I'll play a melody which will be assigned layer 1B. bending on channel 5. As you can hear, the pitch bend is also identical to the way I played it. Now let's turn on quantizing for 1 8th, which is half a clock. Now when the layer is quantized, so is the pitch bent, making it no longer smooth as it was before. So let's kill the pitch bend, layer 1C, and make a new layer quick box that won't be quantized. This one I'll set for an 8-bar loop, just to keep things interesting. I'll do a pitch bend loop on channel 5 for the 8 bars, 
Any MIDI input will start recording a layer. I'll switch back to the original channel to pitch bend the piano also. Now each of these layers can be played at different times by expanding the layer step sequencer to have several different steps. This sequencer can be accessed under the layer quick box, and we'll use sequence number one. Each step is eight bars, so the next eight bars, let's double click bars to make a new step. Then turn off the second loop with the pitch bend on channel five, which is letter B. Another step, but with channel five's pitch bend on and channel one's pitch bend off. Oops, it's hard to control the encoder when the camera is in the way. Now another step with both pit bends off. And one more, but shorter, only four bars, which will cause the pitch bends to be staggered on each full pass of um, layer one. Because the step is shorter than the pitch bend recording on the bright synth channel five, it will be restarted before completion once the sequence loops to the top again. Obviously, staggering the pitch bend so it's four, bow four bars out on every second pass was maybe not a good idea, but we'll keep it anyways. Now let's go down a completely different road and apply some playlist effects to modify the way our two layers in the first layer, quick box, will play. We must enter the playlist grid in order to add playlist effects, of course. The playlist will be covered in a different tutorial as there's really no progression of blocks to attach the playlist effects to, I'll just repeat our percussive hi-hat tracks tracker sequence blocks. The playlist pointer will step through these. To the first block, I'll attach PLFX1 and select an element to program. Doing this exits to the main screen so that any parameter can be accessed and selected for the PLFX to learn. We're going to modify the mirror parameter. Select it and press the S button next to the flashing LED. Now we return to the PLFX list. On the third block of the PLFX number must be set to two for a fresh list. Click an element to do the same and set the mirror to a new value. Because the set parameter states don't return to their original value, you must place another PLFX to do this. So let's hit play to decide on a mirror value. It was originally the other way, but was very confusing and would return values at the exit of a block, which was never really the desired outcome. Mirror is such a unique modifier, isn't it? Sounds good. Click S button and done. When the playlist progresses to the first block in the group, the mirror is turned off. Then the third block, it is set to our mirror value of 65. Mirror could be called a consonance dissonance inverter, but that wouldn't fit in the quick box. 
So for yet another fork in the road, I'm going to apply a recorded automation to the master transpose. This will be done via the MIDI remote quick box. The remote channel is set to 16 by default. Because this is a new song project and the global remote assignments are all over the place, we're going to learn to the song project remote list instead and set that list as a priority. These remote controls will be purely notes, so I'll set that to view them later. So now we're armed to set MIDI inputs to any parameter. The SLED flashes as a reminder that MIDI Learn is active. The parameter is going to be Master Transpose, so click to highlight that, which is set to zero. Then decide on a note to assign to it. Oops, it must be on channel 16 for remote. I always like to start things at a C note. Now for the second transpose, let's go to plus three and use the D key for that. Set to plus five and use the E key. Then lastly, set to plus seven with the F key. One could do every key and set a whole octave if it makes sense with the song project. Hitting the S button will cancel any MIDI learn in progress. Now for a test. Looks like they're all working. So, now for the intended automation recording. Automation is primarily for adding MIDI CC control changes to set various MIDI parameters in your synth, but it can be used on the remote channel as a bonus. Automation size can be free running or set to time out after a number of bars. I'll set it to 16 for this demonstration. Now to play in some transpositions. Automation has an advantage over playlist effects, which we just did to control the mirror, in that it doesn't rely on playlist blocks or bar steps. Master transpose, though, is one of the few parameters that is locked to change only on beat one of a bar. The clock divider is another. Also, automations can start at any time by placing and arming the block looping it or conditionally starting or stopping it, as with any playlist track. Almost done recording. There, now we have an automation on the master transpose. In addition to the PLFX changing the, mir the layer's mirror and a staggered layer sequencer that alternates on each pass, Looking into the automation block, we can see the transpose recording at automation number one. Each automation block can make use of any of the recordings made, in combination or alone. This makes it a pretty flexible addition to the sequerolo. Direct MIDI CC recordings show up in the list as the first CC number and the channel encountered in the recording, but each recording can have multiple MIDI controls, making it perfect for XY controllers. But this automation was for remote control, so the actual remote control will show up instead. The rest of this video is just me adding another playlist effect to control the clock and some other stuff. I could have skipped adding the four bar step in layer one sequence, 
but that would be boring, and I personally enjoy a bit of generative sequencing in modular. Between these three controls, uneven layer step lengths, a faster PLFX, and a long automation, it takes quite a while before the cycle repeats. Perhaps 32 bars? I have three VCOs hooked up, and a uh, GM MIDI synth is a Yamaha MU128. I hope this video was informative and will help with becoming familiar with the workflow in the Sequoia. I'm Sandy Sims. Thanks for watching. And hey, keep on patching.